Welcome guys, my name is Tom Antos and in this video I'm going to show you how uh, knowing how to do basic effects in a compositing software such as After Effects can help you uh, create a sequence like the one you're watching up here and more specifically I'm going to show you how I created this shot up here with the kite. Now the reason why we had to resort to using a little special effect is because doesn't matter how hard we tried uh, in this shot, as you can see, we couldn't actually get that you know l angle looking down uh, onto the boy as he throws the kite and actually have the kite kind of perfectly fly in frame and be visible. Uh, it was just you know it, it always happens. You have this sort of idea in your head, you you plan it all out, you do your storyboards, and then you actually show up and try to film, and you realize that it's just not really practical to get this kind of shot that you imagined. So in this case, uh, this shot that we got here with the, with the boy on the drone, uh, it was just basically impossible to, to get the actual kite in there because it was too windy. Um, also, just the kite then itself didn't really fly that well. Uh, you would actually have to have it tied to a string, and it basically, which would have been, you know, maybe we if we really tried, uh, you know, after many many takes, maybe we could actually get a, a shot that was usable, but. Uh, you know, again, we're shooting a music video, in this case, uh, we only had literally minutes to get the shot before I had to move on to the next scene. Uh, so we just figured it's going to be easier, as they say, to fix it in post. <laughs> so what we end up doing uh, after the principal photography uh, was done was we end up just getting a shot of the kite itself uh, on a blue screen, as you can see up here. And we knew we just needed a couple seconds of it there, and we, we had some like a wind machine kind of blowing at it, so we see some movement there in the fabric. Uh, and now we're gonna composite that into our shot. So here inside After Effects, I uh, have the the footage all laid out, uh, the, my our background plate with the boy, and then the blue screen shot of the kite. First thing you'll notice is the blue screen shot is a little shaky. Uh, you know, probably the best way would be to. I've shot this on a tripod, but my second unit, uh, the, the basically director uh, or DP made the decision that uh, they didn't need a tripod. So uh, thank God this is can be easily fixed right now. So just right click on it here, go track and stabilize and we'll go warp stabilizer. It's going to analyze it. Uh, and one thing I'm actually going to do in here, I want to change some of the options. So I uh, want to change the method from uh, subspace warp. Uh, to actually just change it to position. Uh, I just really want to, you know, I, I don't really want to do formed footage or anything like that. I just want to adjust the position of this. And also when it comes to framing, uh, I can just do stabilize only. I, I don't want to crop in or anything like that. So I end up with something like this. You can see it still moves a little bit, but it's okay. It's, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but it's more or less stabilized now. Uh, now uh, we can take this footage uh, and we can pre-compose it actually might be better so right click on it go pre-compose and uh, here in our di you know option box I'm going to choose move all attributes to a new composition so that that st stabilization is actually in our pre-composed footage I'll name it kite now uh, I can double click on this uh, this footage and will take us to our pre-composed comp and then here I can you know go right right in and uh, apply our um, basically we want to key out the, all the blue obviously in the shot so uh, right click on it go to effects keying and go key light uh, for the screen color choose the little color picker and just pick this um, and it already does a pretty damn good job if you really wanted to go and kind of t tweak it, it's not even necessary that much for this this setup. But if you wanted to tweak it further, you can kind of adjust some of these settings here. Uh, for example, like clip the white areas here a little bit, uh, clip the black areas, that kind of stuff you can do. Um, I actually want it to be a little bit like have that transparency. And then also, we just basically will mask out because we have this little light stand here. So, um, so I'm gonna here go to our final result and I'll take the the key uh, the, the pen tool here and I'm just gonna create a quick quick mask around here nothing fancy something like that so that now means if I look at the transparency this is basically what we end up with this little shot here of the kite now here I notice there's part of it where the wing gets kind of clipped by my garbage mask so I'll just extend it make it a little bit bigger you want to make sure that your your footage 
stays there always visible. So you can kind of scroll it, and that looks pretty good. So now we can go back to our uh, kite effects here, and here's how we have this this shot looking. Now here's what you could do. You could just go right away. Uh, maybe let me duplicate this. So I can kind of illustrate. So I'll take this element here uh, of the kite, and you could just right here. Kind of scale it down, obviously, you know, adjust the position of it. Uh, it's going to be the first frame. All right, position, scale, rotation, and we just kind of play around with it. And uh, let's say we wanted to make it like this, adjust the scale, and then have it basically him, you know, push the kite like this, maybe rotate it like that. And maybe scale it a little bit so it looks like it's going up. So you could just have it like this, more or less. And then, you know, I want to kind of have the kite fly up into the frame. Now, the problem you're going to see very quickly is that, you know, I can rotate it and I can scale it and move it around the frame, but you'll notice the perspective doesn't change, right? It's always just kind of facing perfectly the camera and it doesn't look like it's, uh, you know, like the kite's really kind of moving in the in, in the... Basically, you know, shifting its weight left and right. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, basically just makes it look a little bit artificial because of it. So I think the best way to do it is to actually going to be convert by converting it into a 3D object. So um, I'm going to delete this one here. Go to our original here, kite layer. And very easy here in our mode, uh, you know, options. Here, right click on any of these options here and go to columns. And you want to make sure that you have the switches on. If you turn this off, you don't have the switches visible. So turn the switches on. And in here, in the option for the 3D layer, you want to just enable it for the kite element. So we have this. Now you'll notice that right now the center of the of the kite, you could say, that where the our little you know point is, is up here somewhere in the back. So I want to move that actually. Um, so let's move it in. Uh, maybe the X position a bit. Oh no, actually move the anchor point, sorry. So move the anchor point in X position and then this is in the Y. So I would say somewhere there. Probably we want the center of gravity to be for the for the kite. And now the cool thing is that this is actually a 3D object. I can actually also create a camera. So I'll create a, a layer, new camera and in the option box here you can select kind of what it is. 25 millimeter is actually correct because that was more or less the, the, the focal length of the, of the drone camera there. So I'll create that. And I'm gonna go to a, a two view here, split view. So this is what we're seeing through the camera. And this is here our camera. And we're seeing this from the top. So I wanna maybe like go look from the left. Here's our kite. So when I select the kite, this is it. This is a, the little like object here. It's basically a plus, flat, piece of footage that you can now rotate in 3D. Well, I want to take the camera and I want to rotate it, so you move it up, kind of looking down. So I'll move it up, and as you can see, uh, when I do that, look at the perspective on the kite change. So it actually looks like it's getting, you know, closer or further from the camera and the angle changes. And that's the kind of reason why uh, I, you know, I wanted to do this. I wanted to kind of give it that perspective right away, and that it will allow me to deform basically the kite as if it was actually moving in 3D space. Um, and then, uh, yeah, now I'm just going to kind of play around with its position here. So I'm going to move the kite maybe somewhere there, scale the, actually the size of it. Maybe somewhere there I want it to be. And right away I can click the, the little stopwatch next to my, basically, the, the things that I'm adjusting because I want to actually animate them over time. And I have the orientation. So maybe at the beginning the kite can be sort of like this. I think, yeah, somewhere there, so it's a little bit more visible, and rotate it this way, like that, and you basically just start kind of playing around with it, so we have our first keyframe, maybe move it a little bit there, um, and then we can, you know, adjust it here, kind of come up with the path that we like, maybe I'll just have it move like this, but kind of go up now, and, uh, you know, kind of go up a little bit towards the camera here. And I'll move it around here again. Again, rotate it a little bit. Maybe it moves like this. 
And really, you know, I, I don't want to be adjusting the scale actually, so the scale I'm going to leave there, but you kind of just want to play around with it now, the position. Maybe rotate it slightly the other way, like that, so it looks like it's kind of tilting up. Uh, somewhere there. Maybe tilt it up even more. So there, and then kind of we want to, I would say, you know, maybe go already to our last frame and figure out what the f last position is going to be. So I'm really going to move it closer to the camera. As you can see I'm moving in 3D space here by grabbing these uh, three arrows there. So moving it really close uh, and maybe have it kind of go off here to the side. And again, play around with its orientation now. Something like that. Obviously, it rotated. So it's going to be pointing this way now. So we can kind of quickly preview this. And you can see now, I can even grab my points for the path and I can even adjust it here. Like, and you know, maybe smooth it out a little bit more. So it looks like this and like this. So you see he throws it and then the kite kind of slows down. Maybe you want it to kind of go a little bit further back here and kind of rotate a little bit more on this side. So you can see it goes like this. I can see now on that path, it's not very straight. So maybe I'll move this like that. And that's kind of how you're going to play around with it. So you're going to play around with it till it starts moving in 3D uh, and you get the kind of motion that you like. You can quickly preview it, see how it's looking, and it's already kind of getting there. It looks better than when we had the 2D version, but uh, I'm going to let me, you know, kind of go in and tweak the motion a little bit more. And after I've played around with it a little bit, um, this is kind of the motion that I end up getting. It's just, you know, uh, I think it feels a little bit more realistic. You can see it kind of getting, you know, kind of thrown in the wind, and then it looks as if the wind kind of made it, you know, made the kite kind of twist a little bit there. But again, this is just all your own preference. That's where kind of creativity comes in. You can you can make it go left and then right, or maybe go in, in a spiral or something like that. It's really up to you. Uh, but definitely, I think you'll agree with me that uh, having the kite as a 3D object allows you to really kind of play around with it a lot more than, uh, as if, you know, if you were just working with it as a flat 2D layer. Now, another thing I don't like about the kite right now is that I feel like it's, you know, even though it was actually shot, you know, with a wind machine on the on the green screen or blue screen, uh, I feel like it's still a little too stiff looking, like it's not deforming as much, uh, especially when you when you compare it to... Uh, kind of how it looks in the previous shots here. If you look at the whole sequence here when the boy is kind of holding it, it just feels a lot more flexible. And and you definitely, when you're doing effects, you kind of want to make sure that it fits, you know, that it looks good, not just in the shot that you're working on, but kind of looks good and it fits with the whole sequence. So here, definitely, the kite looks very flexible, and here, kind of looks very stiff, right? Um, so what I think I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to basically just end up adding some extra deformation. And you could do it as a 3D thing, but in here, honestly, I think if we do it as a sort of a quick a cheat, you could say, uh, it's still going to work. So um, there's different ways you can do it, uh, but I'm going to go and grab this one tool that I think is going to work, which is under distortion here, and you're just going to select liquify. So liquify allows you to kind of move the image, technically you're moving in 2D, but it doesn't matter um, and yeah I'm just gonna select here our tool settings maybe make it a bit bigger the brush even bigger something like this and I want to take maybe one edge of this kind of push it up to make it look as if it's you know, really kind of getting deformed by the wind so maybe something like this there and then that we can apply another liquify effect Go liquify, and under this one also you can play around with it. Definitely increase the brush and make it maybe distort this side of the kite. So I'm kind of making it look as if you know, kind of like in the previous shot, like as if the wind kind of bulges the the kite a little bit like this. Now the cool thing is because it's done as a liquify effect, that means that I can actually animate it. So uh, what that means is that, for example, I can go here to my options here under effects. And let's say the uh, liquify 2 is the, the left side here. So I can actually uh, adjust, uh, uh, for example, the percentage. So I can put a stopwatch here. 
and I can somehow drag it down. As you notice, if I pull it to zero, it goes back to what it was. If I extend it, it keeps on deforming, right? So I can kind of animate this and make this kind of flap back and down. So maybe here I'll pull it down a little bit. Then I'm going to go to the other liquify effect. And then the distortion percent also I'm going to animate on this one. And maybe this one will be near 100%. And maybe you can go up here, make this go, let's say, to zero. And make the other one kind of go up. You know, sort of like that. You kind of want to play around with it. So let's say like this. Maybe this goes up a little. Then in here, maybe both of them go up. Both sides kind of get distorted there. You get the point. Maybe here they're both at zero. And here maybe we'll increase this side and decrease this side. Again, kind of play around with it. It's kind of like when you're animating the actual, you know, position or the, the path of the kite. Uh, and then you just kind of play, you know, do your preview and make sure that it looks good. If it doesn't, you go back in and you start thing. You're never going to get these kind of, like when it comes to motion, uh, you know, of whether it's the, the actual path of the kite or, um, you know, like here we're doing this, adding extra little flapping kind of, you know, distortion to the wings. You're never going to get it perfectly done right away. But you can see, right, like, r you see up here how it's distorting it a little bit extra, makes it feel like it's bulging a bit more. So those are the kind of things that you can do uh, easily. And again, maybe I'll actually even increase that amount and kind of get it looking, uh, you know, to the point that I like. So I actually ended up kind of playing around with the motion of the kite a little bit further um, and, and kind of also, you know, reanimating the, the kind of distortion of the kite till I get it to a point that I like. And that's something you got to keep in mind when you're doing effects is that it's never a simple one, two, three kind of step uh, process. Is you're going to go one, two, sometimes go back to step one, then, you know, go on to step three and, and so on. Uh, you're kind of going to be always tweaking it and adjusting it. So, anyways, I got the, the kite moving how I want it to be in the starting. Um, so, I'm happy with that, but it definitely still does not look like it's a part of the shot. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, colors and contrast, um, all that stuff is, is definitely one of them. Uh, it does not match the, our background footage. But also, a key thing is missing, like the shadow. Like in here, you can see we have the kite and the boy here. You can see the shadow from his hand. But there is no shadow from the kite, so we can add that actually pretty easily. But before I do that, um, I actually want to kind of pre-compose and you can see all of our 3D work that we did uh, into another composition. But I also want to add something to this shot, so um, to our 3D element. So one thing I want is that as the kite kind of goes up towards the camera here, I would like to add it, uh, basically make it look like it's going out of focus. It's getting so close here that the camera is staying focused on the boy and the kite, kite is going out of focus. So it, that can be easily done because we actually have a, a 3D layer. Um, it, everything's done in, in 3D. So if I go to our two horizontal views here, you can see this is our camera and this is actually the kite. You can see it kind of goes up. Uh, that's the path of it towards the camera. So what I want to do is at the beginning, somewhere here, I'm going to go here to camera options depth of field you just click it turn it on and you can see this here this is the basically the focus distance so i'm going to click the stopwatch up here and animate the focus distance so at the beginning the focus i want it to be there where the kite is as the kite moves maybe just the beginning of it i will also move the focus distance maybe up to here so it kind of stays in focus just for the beginning and then after that I will just let it go. So then you can see the kite is going to keep on going up towards the camera and it's going to be out of focus. And you can see that already up here. So if I turn off the depth of field, this is how it looks without it. This is how it looks with it. Now, if you want to make it kind of go out of focus even further, you know, you know how, how you can do that, how to increase depth of field. Um, or, you know, you could say make a shallower depth of field in your camera. You open up the aperture. So here, if I increase the aperture setting in the camera, can see it makes it more out of focus. If I decrease it, it makes it sharper, right? So maybe I'll, I'll put it somewhere like here to this point. Um, so yeah, once you're happy with that, uh, maybe one more thing I'm also going to add is, especially here when the boy kind of pushes the kite, it looks too sharp and that's because it needs to have some uh, motion blur. So uh, motion blur, you can enable the motion blur here in, in the, again in the columns. So for this layer, I'll click the motion blur. And if you want to also see it in your composition, you got to enable the master setting here, uh, which is the, here by clicking this motion blur. And you can see it 
right away it's going to add this you know subtle motion kind of a blur to the to the kite so once i'm happy with this uh then i can select the kite and the camera and we're going to right click go pre-compose uh you can call it 3d kite now make sure move all attributes into new composition is selected and uh and that's it just go okay and that now moved everything into another composition so this is l you know literally just a flat layer now that contains the all you know our kite uh and i can duplicate this now easily so just go control d on windows and i'm gonna take uh, here let's go to the beginning I'm gonna grab the layer that's underneath it. So here we are. And I'm gonna just kind of move it down somewhere here. You can see this is where his hand is, and, and this is his other hand's kind of shadow. So the sun was almost perfectly kind of above him. So the kite shadow should be, should be somewhere here. I can select the layer here and make this uh, basically the, the transfer mode. So basically change it from, uh, I actually uh, transfer mode here, uh, and change it from normal to darken. So you can see it's going to darken the shot, but I also want to now make this all black. So I'm going to right click on it or go, you can go here, right click, go to effects, um, generate, go fill. And right now it's red. We want it to be black, right? The shadow is supposed to be black. Now it's obviously to dark the shadow. You notice here the boy's shadow is, it's dark, but it's not that dark. It's not, you know, pure black. So I'm going to go to the opacity just setting and just kind of play around with the opacity until it looks like it's kind of more or less the right opacity. So I would say somewhere here is good. Now if I move forward, you can see that shadow should be moving here with, uh, with uh, the, the shadow there. And I think maybe it's still a little too much. Maybe I'll move it down to like 60 or something. And maybe the color, I'm actually going to change it slightly kind of a little bit bluish because I can see the shadow here from the boy is also a little bit has this bluish tone so maybe something like that somewhere there is good I think um, and then one thing we can change is just because up here when the kite goes up it actually was getting larger we don't necessarily want it to get larger up here so I'm gonna go to the position here and the scale of our uh, shadow uh, layer and at the beginning it's okay, but when it moves to somewhere here, I want the kite to be actually smaller than it is there. So smaller, but because of that I still have to counter it and kind of move it a little bit. So somewhere there, I think. So that, you know, the shadow shouldn't be technically getting larger, because it's only the kite that's going up towards the camera. So And then somewhere here, that shadow is, is just supposed to completely disappear, so I can now take this and make it even smaller and just make it kind of go off screen and again let's preview this quickly and definitely with the shadow you know it looks a lot more you know believable right like it's it's a part of the shot um now the next thing uh, really that it, we need to do is to adjust the colors of this to kind of match this you know our shot better and the way that I'm going to do this, um, that's usually kind of how I would advise to do it when you have effects in your shot. There's going to be always exceptions to this rule, but in general, you want to first apply your kind of final color grade to your shot and then uh, tweak the colors of your CG elements. Uh, so we can look at our here whole sequence. So you can see this is kind of the colors that we have, kind of like this, uh, you know, teal and orange kind of grade that the final music video has. So definitely we want to apply that to our final shot here. So I'm gonna go back here, create a new layer, new adjustment layer, put it on top here. And in our adjustment layer, we're gonna go to effects, color correction. Uh, we can choose different things, but I actually have already my color grade from the final music video done. So uh, I exported it as a lot from DaVinci Resolve. So I can go to Lumetri color, my creative tab, I'm gonna go here and look for my LUT here. So here I'm going to load in my LUT. This is kind of how it, the shot looks. Um, and I can still kind of actually tweak it. I, I don't know if it's the, the correct colors here, like when I'm just cor comparing it to this and this. Maybe it looks a little bit too, too kind of um, warmish. Or maybe actually, yeah, I want it to be a little bit more yellow kind of colors. 
So I'll adjust here the temperature. I can kind of look at it now and see, okay, is it matching? And definitely one thing you'll see right away is when you apply your kind of overall color grade to your shot, it makes the whole thing, uh, you know, the, the CG elements and the elements here in the, um, you know, f your background plate kind of come together because it's kind of like you're putting an overall kind of wash of colors and it kind of, you know, makes everything look a little bit more similar. So it definitely helps kind of blend it in there. Uh, I would still though go in just kind of comparing it to the the shots here of the kite before the kite looks a lot brighter kind of you know more yellowish so maybe I'll go in here to our kite layer and go color correction again go lumetri color and we can adjust it here maybe adjust the saturation the temperature also make it a bit more yellowish maybe like this um, Something like that there. So you kind of want to just play around with it until until you're happy with it. Uh, and again, there you know you might export this, throw it into your final uh, composition, and and think you're done. And then it might turn out that again, it's something's not quite fitting. So uh, you know, it's, don't don't be uh, shy about the fact that you have to sometimes, like I said, go back one or two or three steps. Uh, and then kind of re-render your shot and all that stuff. But that's kind of more or less the process. In the final music video, we actually end up putting uh, a title on it, on this. So the, the name of the music video. And actually the whole shot, you know, on the director decided he wants to uh, kind of put it all kind of out of focus to bring more attention to the title. So here's how the final sort of music video looks. You can see the, the, the colors that we have. Um, and then we're going to see the our sequence. You can kind of see... Now, how it looks, and I think it looks pretty believable, even though, like I said, we had to fake that one shot, and the kite wasn't actually a, a real kite. Um, it was, or you know, it was a real kite element, but it was added in uh, in post production to kind of, again, you know, save us time when filming. Um, this is kind of how this, um, yeah, the final final sequence here looks. And he throws up the kite, and like I said, now it's the whole thing, the whole shot even goes out of focus. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you guys want to actually see the finished music video, it's gonna it's gonna premiere soon, I think. Uh, I'm gonna post up the link in the description of this video, so definitely check check that out. Uh, or as always, you can go to my website at tomantosfilms.com, and you'll be able to see there a post when the final music video is online. Uh, you can check it out. Let me know what you think of the overall job that we did on this. And overall, if you guys like this video, make sure you subscribe, uh, you know, hit that bell notification button if you want to be notified of the future videos. Uh, and let me know uh, what you liked about this video in the comment section below. Anyways, my name again is Tom Antos, and uh, thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.